And this leads to a discussion of the often quoted separation of church and state. Let's look at this idea and let's see the truth about this. This is going to blow your mind. The words separation of church and state do not appear in the United States Constitution. They do not appear in the Declaration of Independence. They are simply not there. They were actually written by Thomas Jefferson in a letter to the Danbury Baptists of Connecticut. Now, we've already talked about the Connecticut. Remember, we talked about Connecticut. Connecticut was a clearly a Christian, established as a Christian uh, state. Well, Thomas Jefferson received a request from the Danbury Baptists of Connecticut, and he wrote back to them this letter. And in that letter, he coins the phrase, separation of church and state. This was written on January the 1st, 1802. Now, what I want to do is I want to read this letter to you. And again, I'm sorry I have to do so much reading tonight, but that's just where we have all this information. It's all written. I want to read this letter to you, and I want to discuss the context of this with you. And you're going to find that it is exactly the opposite of what you've been told that it means. It is stunning. So let's read this letter from Thomas Jefferson, who was the President of the United States at this time, to the Danbury Baptists. Gentlemen, the affectionate sentiments of esteem and approbation which you are so good as to express towards me on behalf of the Danbury Baptist Association give me the highest satisfaction. My duties dictate a faithful and zealous pursuit of the interest of my constituents. And in proportion as they are persuaded of my fidelity to those duties, the discharge of them becomes more and more pleasing. What's he doing? He's just buttering them up. He's saying, thanks for saying all the nice things about me, and I'm glad that you sent this to me, and your, your issue is important. Perfect politician letter here. But let's go on. Believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions, I contemplate with sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declared that their legislature should make, quote, make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. What is he referring to here? What he's saying is that as president, the Constitution of the Union, here what he says when he says, with sovereign reverence, that act of the whole American people. He's talking about the Constitution that the, all the states approved. That all of them approved that the this federal government ha, could make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. He's referring to the federal Constitution of the Union. We're going to explain this a little bit more in just a moment. Let us finish up here. Adhering to this expression of the supreme will of the nation in behalf of the rights of conscience, I shall, I shall see with sincere satisfaction the progress of those sentiments which tend to restore to man all his natural rights, convinced he has no natural right in opposition to his social duties. More flowery language. And then he says, I reciprocate your kind prayers for the protection and blessing of the common father and creator of man. Remember, he was a deist, so he's referring to God in general. And tender you for yourselves and your religious association assurances of my high respect and esteem. Thomas Jefferson. All right, so what is going on here? How do we understand what Je Jefferson actually meant here when he used the word separation of church and state? I'm going to read to you from an article I wrote on this probably seven or eight years ago and explain to you what is going on here. This is fascinating, so listen closely to this. How can we understand what Jefferson actually meant when he used these words? The key lies in the context. Jefferson's reply to the Danbury Baptist Association came less than a year after a bitter election fight with the Federalist Party. During this campaign, he received tremendous criticism for not enacting national days of religious homage like the presidents before him did. The Baptist letter itself was actually a plea for help. 
They were concerned that their religious liberty would be slighted by the Congregationalists, who were the, quote, legally established church in both Massachusetts and Connecticut. So what is happening is the Baptists in Connecticut were concerned that the Congregationalists were going to infringe on their rights as Baptists because Congregationalism was the official state church of not only Connecticut but Massachusetts. Now isn't that consistent with what Judge, Judge said, the Judge Brimmer, I think was his name, said in the case of the Church of the Holy Trinity versus the United States? That's exactly what he's saying. The, church, the states had state churches. So the Baptists were writing to, to uh, Jefferson to try and get some help from the federal government. And here's what the Baptists wrote in their letter to Thomas Jefferson. Quote, What religious privileges we enjoy as a minor part of a state, we enjoy as favors granted and not as inalienable rights. In other words, they were asking Jefferson to help them more firmly establish their religious rights in Connecticut. They were appealing to the Union to help them in this state matter. Jefferson's letter in reply, including his now famous words, must be understood in that context. What Jefferson was saying was not that the First Amendment, which says that Congress cannot establish a, a, a religion or prevent the free exercise of religion, separated religion from government, which is what we are told today. That's not what he was saying. What he was saying that was because the First Amendment of the Union Constitution prevented the federal government from interfering between the states and churches in matters of religion, he had no power to help them. What he's saying is, look, this is a state issue. I because the Union established the Constitution that said the federal government cannot interfere in the state's religious matters, I, as the president of this Union, have no power to help you. He was not saying that the, the, the federal government could not participate or take any stance in religion whatsoever or have any kind of religious monuments or religious words used or anything like that or even offer prayers. He was saying that I cannot interfere in the state's matters in religion. Matthew Staver of Liberty Council wrote, this is an attorney on constitutional issues, Jefferson undoubtedly meant that the First Amendment prohibited the federal Congress from enacting any law respecting an establishment of religion. If Congress had no authority in matters of religion, then neither did the President. Religion was clearly within the jurisdiction of the church and states. So did Jefferson keep religion out of, quote, state life, federal government, federal state union life? If Jefferson thought religion should be kept completely out of public, public life, his other decisions while governing, whether at the state or federal level, should have demonstrated this conviction. The fact is, they don't. Jefferson, quote, endorsed the use of federal funds to build churches and to support Christian missionaries working among the Indians, unquote. Furthermore, as a member of the Virginia State Legislature, he helped draft and enact, quote, a day of fasting, humiliation, and prayer as the governor of Virginia. He also wrote as governor of Virginia, quote, a bill for establishing religious freedom. And while governor of Virginia authorized a day of thanksgiving and prayer to, quote, Almighty God. And consider this, and look at the screen here. Consider this underlined sentence. Jefferson ended his letter to the Baptists, the very letter in which he discussed the separation between church, church, and church and state, with a prayer to God. I reciprocate your kind prayers for the protection and blessing of the common Father and Creator of man. So the reason that Jefferson used this phrase was to say that there is a wall of separation between the federal government and the states in matters of religion. The states can do whatever they want to on matters of religion. They can establish state churches, they can have national days of feast, they can have anything they want. But the federal government cannot intervene in those. But the federal government can still participate in religion. And as we saw Jefferson himself 
approved of the funding to build churches for missionaries from the federal treasury. So my friends, what we have been told is a complete fabrication. There is no place in the Constitution which says the Ten Commandments must be removed from federal buildings. There is no place in the Constitution that means that state governments have to remove uh, Christian flags, Christian words, Bible verses, or anything of the like from their property, from their buildings, or from their institutions. It is a complete lie.